Good evening, everybody, and welcome to another episode of Philly Sports Talk, America's favorite Philadelphia sports talk show with Cash and Chris. I'm Cash, and Chris is here. How you doing, Chris? I'm doing well. How's your week been? Uh, busy. Busy. But, uh, you know, it's not bad. Well, we, we had a, um, all three teams won last night. First time since 2012 that that's happened in Philadelphia. Wow. Yeah. Flyers, Phillies, and Sixers. That's the first time the Flyers, Phillies, and Sixers won since 2012. Last time that the Eagles were involved and all the teams went in was all the way back in 2002. The Eagles had a playoff game January 19th against the uh, Chicago Bears with Jim Miller. And the, uh, the Flyers won that night, and the Sixers won that night. That's a long time. It's a long time ago. As long as they don't fall off the Eagles, the Eagles seem to do well against the Bears in the playoffs. Yeah, yeah, the doink, double doink game in that game. Well, the Fog Bowl. Can't forget the Fog Bowl. Oh, I'm sorry. We weren't going to start the show off this way, but since you said it, I watched that game, and the University of Pennsylvania on a Sony portable television. Well, I guess the wrong way through the game, you, could, you couldn't, I couldn't see say it. it. <laughs> you couldn't see it. I mean, we could have had the Sony flashback right away. Yeah, yeah. I understand it. <laughs> yes, exactly. But we'll start off with our, um, our average 500 team, your Philadelphia Phillies. So, um, I'm not happy with after a five and one start, was it? Or four and one? Yeah, five and one, right? It was, it was a five, five and one start. Yeah, five and one start. And they have not won back to back games since. And you, you said that they wouldn't be four games, more than four games over 500 the rest of the season. And I think you're going to be right. Yeah, I, I look at it from, from the standpoint of what I'm seeing now. Yeah. And I'm seeing just how inconsistent they are. Now, of course, I'm, I'm hoping that uh, I'm not correct on that, but just with what they've got to put out there every day with a lineup and some struggles that guys who you need to rely on have, have, have been having, and Bryce Harper now having an injury, and it just seems like the team, like like you said, it's, it's probably a 500 team. Yeah, for yeah. Game or- yeah. They've actually gotten two good outings from Vince Velasquez the last two times out, which we didn't expect, so that's Two wins, or they wait, they win the game in Colorado. Yeah, they did, right? That was yes. Well, it's, it's interesting when you look back over the last couple of wins. Chase Anderson, mm-hmm. uh, they won a game he started. They won two games that Vince Velasquez has started, but they haven't won the games that Aaron Nola and Zach Wheeler have started. Or Zach Eflin. So, right. <laughs> so our, our our theory about uh, betting against the Phillies when Anderson and Velasquez pitching, we would have lost a lot of money this week. That's, yeah, people would have money betting on that. And, and it was just one of those things, I guess that was the Friday night game against the Mets, where it was um, that uh, amazing output by the Phillies offense where they scored two runs on a wild pitch. Yeah, how about that game? <laughs> they held up amazingly. Unbelievable. Uh, <laughs> I don't think I've ever seen that happen before. A pitcher strikes out in a wild pitch and two runs scored. I hit the umpire and went, missed, went the opposite direction, so the country could find the ball. And two runs, two runs come around, that would be it. Well, and we're looking at, looking at the way that the Phillies have, have, have been this season, when you get to that bullpen, you wouldn't think that uh, two runs would be able to hold up. No. But for, fortunately, that night, that night it did. But the last couple of games that they've, that they've lost, They've had some struggles in this in the seventh or eighth inning, and the game, the game Sunday night where D.D. Gregorius put him up four to two with with a huge home run. And before you can blink, there was a six run inning, the biggest inning 
Budweiser, and that's all season followed. Uh, it was it, it was just it was amazing, and of course, for everyone watching that game on national TV, that was the one where uh, Reese Hoskins uh, had the home run call back that would have, that would have tied the game amazingly off uh, Edwin Diaz. Unbelievable! Man, it was inches. And I watched it probably five times. I couldn't tell. I couldn't tell if it had a seat or the or the um the top of the fence. I guess they could tell. It looked to me like it could a seat the way it carried back. Well, the way I look at it, it was close enough. Yeah, yeah. Well, well, just like NBA and NFL, the call in the field was home run. It has to be conclusive. I didn't think it was conclusive. No, and the amazing thing about that was. It was it was a struggle then to have Steve Bryce Harper come up with a, with what is now injury keeping him out to his wrist to to end the game off familia. And the other thing too is that, that would have only tied the game, so no right. Phillies and it would have gone into extra innings and that probably would have been a problem as well. Yeah. But it was it was just an interesting thing to see them come back. But then if uh, Reese Hoskins didn't make that mental blunder that a uh, kid in second grade shouldn't make on a ball field. Uh, the Phillies might have been in that position. Right. right. But, I mean, they, they're missing Gene Segura. They missed Dean for a couple games. They missed Bryce for a couple games. I mean, if they were healthy, they, they may have a win or two more, but even at 15 and 13, 15 and 14, they're their player, they're, they're, they're offensive player, superstar away from being a contender. At least one player away. Well, and the other thing about that, which is true, um, <laughs> I mean, Andrew McCutcheon is hitting the ball fairly well tonight. Second home run. He just had a second home run in three innings. <laughs> you know what? Interesting story. Earlier today, it was uh, Joe Girardi mentioned he he had a uh, issue with his eyes. He wouldn't say what it was out of some kind of um because he visited a doctor. It was he wasn't allowed to talk about his medical issue. But the the, the reporters think he he just had to get his contacts changed. So shout out to that eye doctor. Well, I think there's some other Phillies who need to go to that guy. <laughs> <laughs> All the center fielders. <laughs> yeah, but the sad part about this home run was he lost the rock, paper, scissors. Yeah. <laughs> he put out the rocket. <laughs> it was paper. But, but what I was going to say was, you're, you're right about that about that comment that they, that they, they're, they're that superstar way. And what seems to be the problem, and you would think it's something that would have been addressed already, but when the lineup's put out, it seems like there's four to five guys who are just automatic outs in the lineup. If they're not, it's a huge bonus for the Phillies. I mean, when you look at the game last last night, it was a huge triple by Roman Quinn that, that, that gave the Phillies uh, the lead. So that, that, that was an... Well, it added to the Phillies' lead last night. JT Real Muto finally with a home run on a game when he hit last yeah. night because the Phillies kept the lead. Um... Even though Naris came in and what, what did he throw? 104 pitches? <laughs> it was a five out save. And it's just, I'm, my confidence level with, with Naris on the mound is, is, is zero out of ten. I, I can't stand watching the team and expecting them to lose because he's on the mound. They, they've had thir- 13 one run games this year, they're, they're seven and six. And it's a one-run game right now. Right. I mean, the only, I, I think, when you look back over over the scores, they had one game against the Mets uh, during that opening stretch where they won eight to two. Other, other than that, I, I was just making a comment last night on Twitter. You you would think an eight to two game would just show up every once in a while. No. And he's out. Wow. <laughs> Another uh, another mistake by Reese Hoskins. Yeah, he tried to make a single into a double, spread out second by probably by forty feet. The, the second base was waiting for him to, to arrive at the base. <sighs> yeah, but they don't make any comments about that mistake on Twitter, or, or, or people think that you're a Philadelphia hater and tell you that you should, you should go and be a Nationals fan or something wow. like that. Left, left fielder, he, he got he did, he did a great job getting to that ball, McKinney. <laughs> I know the throw wasn't even good, but, that, that, but that's how late Hoskins was getting yeah. there. But, but and, and you're right too. It's when when, we, when it seems like every week we come on, we are talking about Hector Neris, and the Phillies did try to address that situation 
with, with, with some other possible arms that, that could be closers. And the one thing I did want to bring up when talking about the Phillies is Jose Alvarado has no business being a Major League Baseball pitcher. No. As, I, mean, he threw, I mean, it's dangerous. I mean, we saw the situation last week in St. Louis where Harper and Dee got hit back-to-back, and Harper took the ones in the face. Yeah. And you had a lot of the Phillies... Uh, the people who comment on the Phillies and the people talking about the games for the Phillies, I mean, that, that can't happen. That can't be that wild. Jose Alvarado is the same way. Yeah, he is. I, I was wrong about him. I thought it was going to be a great pickup. Oh, I, I... Because of his velocity. Now you know why Tampa Bay let him go. That's, that's exactly why. I mean, that's why he was available. And you, you, you saw that, I guess. I guess he's suspended now, but for that little dust-up with the Mets over, over the weekend. But the last game he was in... He, he, he couldn't throw a strike, yeah. and now the sad part is it, you have to leave him in the pitch to three batter, and he's, he's, he's throwing pitches that are going to the backstop, and it's like, I don't know what we can do. <laughs> Nothing. And yeah. the, the other player they picked up was Archie Bradley. I'm oh, sorry. Yeah. yeah, I mean, how, how many times, how many years have the Phillies picked up relievers that just never, never pitched for them? It's the same thing over yeah. David Robertson. It's the same thing over and over again, year after year. Well, and the one question I wanted to ask, and I, I, I guess we can look this up. I was just thinking about this earlier, too. What happened to Sir Anthony Dominguez? How is it these other guys on other teams go out and have, have the Tommy John surgery or whatever the surgery is they need, and they come back, and guys with the Phillies go to have these surgeries, and you never see them again? I don't know. I, don't, I, I had heard he was, he was making his way back, and then I haven't heard anything lately. Uh. No, and that, that's, that's been uh, two, two seasons ago, early on in, in 2019, I believe. All right, so here, they, on February 19th, they, they placed him on a 60-day injured list. So that would take you to, to April 19th, which just passed a couple weeks ago. See, he, he waited, so he didn't have the, the Tommy John surgery until July of last year. I know, I, I know he waited, and it was it was one of those things to where it's like, how, how, how does that happen? Either you, I, I know what they were trying to do. They were trying to hopefully get us through it, but it's either, either you need it or you don't. Yeah, there's just like no news on him at all. There's no new articles or anything. Yeah, and the only other thing that I, that I, that I want to talk about, and, and for everybody who's listening, and I'm sure it's down, or... Uh, downloads our podcast. I don't know. Um, hopefully, uh, we've stated this at the beginning, but you are listening to Philly Sports Talk with Cash and Chris right here on IE Sports Radio, which is your direct feed for all that is sports. And the other thing I wanted to mention on, on the Phillies, and it, it, it's, it's a baseball issue, and Cash, I'll get your opinion on this. Last night, the Phillies start the seventh inning. They're up 4-1, to one, and the reliever couldn't run. Uh, his first name escapes me at the moment, but Sam. I came Sam. Yeah, and he threw he threw thirteen pitches and struck the side out. Um, it, it's, I don't understand why then he isn't starting the eighth inning. That's that's the old you know the, nowadays it's the, the the roles that they give these guys. You know he's going to pitch the seventh, and then Brogdon's going to pitch the eighth, and Nurse is going to pitch the ninth. That's 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 the way the managers do it. And, 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 and the thing is, if if the guys following him have had a positive track record. Doing it, I, I guess that's I guess that's the way to go. But when a, but when a guy's look that dominant out there, mm-hmm. I, t- t- to me, hey, he can pitch the eighth and the ninth. And if that and if that means okay, he's not available right. for a game or two, or a game or two, okay, fine. But how about we just win the one that's in front of us mm-hmm. first, and then let the rest take care of themselves? Because you because you don't know if you're going to need um, uh, to to rely on relief pitching heavily in games coming up. And if, and if a guy's to be fortunate. Fortunately, the, the Phillies weren't able to win that game last night. But I and Brogdon ran into to some tough luck with that rain last yeah, night. That, that was that, crazy. That, yeah, that, that 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 came up. But it's like, hey, if a guy's pitching well, I think, um, yeah, if you think he should be pitching in the seventh, and that's it. He, <laughs> I don't know. I think if he's getting beat out, leave him out there. <laughs> it's like I guess in basketball, if the guy if the guy's hitting threes, don't and, and you expect him to play ten minutes off the bench, and he's uh, six for six from three point range, I'd leave him in. Exactly. Go with what got you there, but baseball's not that way. 
I wish it, I wish it <laughs> was, but it's not. But at some point, at some point, I, I, I think that that has to. A manager has to make that decision, but I haven't been uh, too too impressed with Gerard so so far this season. But I guess a lot of it's the hand he's been dealt as well. Yeah, I'm hearing that a lot. A lot of people aren't really impressed by him. Uh, so you look at the NL East real quick. You got Washington's in first place at twelve and twelve. It's, it kind of reminds me of the NL, the NL, um, not the NL, the NFC East with the Eagles. You know, the Nationals are twelve and twelve. The Phillies are second at fourteen and fifteen. Mets are eleven and twelve. Atlanta surprisingly still struggling at twelve and sixteen. They're missing some pitchers, and uh, the Marlins are eleven and sixteen. But I'm sure once they play the Phillies, they'll straighten that out. Now, now there's only one team in the, in the Phillies division that has a, a positive run differential. Who would you think that is? Yeah, that is the Marlins. Yeah, <laughs> it's the Marlins plus four. Every other team is negative. Phillies are <laughs> Phillies are minus sixteen in the run column. You know that's that, that sounds like a stat you have with the Phillies. But the Phillies are in last place, but the, but, the, but in the division they have the best run differential. Yeah, right. Really. Um, yeah, and that's the thing too. That's that's one thing that the EA Sports did this year for the Phillies. And I know a lot of times, whether it's on Twitter or on the show here, you can have some things that may come across as as negative about the Phillies. And yes, it is the beginning of May, and yes, it is a situation to where there isn't a team in that division that's running away with it. It's just it's frustrating because nine years without without playoffs for right. for the Phillies. And and the thing is, it seems like it's the same problems. Right, year after year, and they don't get addressed. Yeah, it's always taking three one lead. It's like they take that up. It's like they said, "Here's here's Bryce Harper." You know, be happy. Baseball's not a, on a, a one person sport. Baseball's a team sport. I mean, and the other thing, yeah, that, that's exactly right. Once um, once he was signed, mm-hmm. uh, you have to they have an edit. Players, yeah. Yeah, they haven't added some. No, no. I, I guess I guess the addition of Didi uh, Gregorius and uh, JT Romuto have have been um, some pieces around him, but it just hasn't seemed like it's it, it's clicked to this point. Well, the, the, they're one game under five hundred, so obviously some some things are not clicking. Right. Also, you can't have you can't have two starters that are capable, and the rest are question marks. Right, that's true, and the other the other thing with that is when when you do have a situation like that, what hasn't happened this year for the Phillies is that ball home run. Yes. it is. Wow. Bad boy um, Brad does it again. Well, this should be enough for Noah. I think he has a home run every time we're on the air, doesn't he? I think so. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, I was talking about at some point you got you got to roll out that eight to two game, and this might be the one. It could be. We could have called the score. <laughs> I mean, you look at the standings that we talk about baseball teams. Milwaukee seventeen and twelve, and they stink. They're, they're, they do nothing for me, Milwaukee. What do they do? They have. Well, and you look at you look at it too. I, I don't know. I haven't checked it recently, but I looked at the scores earlier. It was like the Giants were winning ten to nothing in the second inning. Mm-hmm. When you look at the, the San Francisco Giants, do you think World Series? But then again, nah. you look at but the Dodgers have been struggling now after the hot start they got off to. The Giants scored ten runs in the first inning today. Oh. And I think the Dodgers lost today. I think the Cubs beat them. Dodgers are well, playing now. Was it, unless it was a double header? Was it a double header? Yeah, I think they were playing. So yeah, they, they did. They, they lost game one, seven to one. And they're in our and our favorite thing, a seven inning double header. I can't stand double headers, seven innings. They have to change that back. Yeah, uh, that's really. Yeah. yeah, they got Trevor Bauer going in the second game. The Dodgers, they're seventeen to thirty. So no, there's not one team I think in all of baseball that's really running away with anything. It's 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 been. Um, I think it's the record for most strikeouts by hitters. So at this point in the season, so nobody nobody's hitting the ball. It's not just the Phillies. Yeah, they've been saying that the offense is down, and, and there's been a few, um, I don't know how serious the talks were, moving them down, back, or doing some things like or that. Or low, lowering the mound, too. Yeah, I don't think anything needs to be done. Just to get you to that way. Well, one thing they did do was they, they, they said they went with a softer baseball. So that's going to make that's gonna make the ball not go as far. 
I don't know, it doesn't affect strikeouts, obviously, but it's going to affect home, you know, balls that would have been home runs will be just flyouts now. Well, it, well, it, wasn't, it wasn't working in Brewers' favor tonight so far. So what, that's three home runs tonight? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they were crushed. Yeah. Well, the, the second McCutcheon, I didn't see the first McCutcheon one, but I saw the second one. I was just cleared the fence. Yeah, I didn't see the first one either. So. So. All right, that'll wrap up our Phillies coverage. Yeah, for everyone watching the games tonight, hopefully it's going to be one where the, where the Phillies win, win a lap for tonight, and uh, it's, it's, it's not an issue to where, uh, with it being 6-1, to one, you look up at the bullpen's in and it's 6-5, and it's like, who's going to close? So, yeah, we covered the Phillies, and what uh, what team's next? Is it the Sixers? Mm, yeah, we could do the Sixers. Yeah, I mean, if you, want, if you want to cover the Eagles, too, that's fine. Um, yeah, we'll get to the Eagles later. It's just, I'm definitely more excited for the Sixers. We we're getting there now. This is the this is the time of year where you know you start to get get itchy. You want the playoffs to get here, and he's like getting for these games. It's let's get these games over with. I'm get, you know getting excited for these these playoffs. Um, well, and, and, and the other thing too is the, the game. Yeah, exactly. I, I know we're, we're looking to the playoffs. They, they played in San Antonio, a team. That uh, really um, doesn't have a lot of uh, NBA players on the team currently. With um, the, the way that that, that team uh, is formulated, a team that the Sixers blew out earlier in the season in Philadelphia, and they had to go to overtime and win on a game-winning tip by Ben Simmons, which is like uh, you expected them to be able to blow out that team. And then last night they uh, lost a twenty-point lead in the fourth. Fourth quarter, it was it was it was down to four at one point, but they ended up winning the game in Chicago as well. So, well, what they did, what, they, what did they do in both of those games? They won the bench. No, they won. They won. They won those games the last the last yep. four, three, four years with Brett Brown. That's that's exactly what what would have happened. There there was there were situations where they were those games were games that uh, the Sixers would have lost. Absolutely. Now, hopefully. Games like that are going to be games that are won in the playoffs as well. Now, of course, it's not going to be against the Bulls and the Spurs or teams, teams of that caliber at some point. But games where where they have leads and it looks like that they're then struggling to hold that lead. Hopefully, that's something where they, they can overcome it in the playoffs this year. Well, San Antonio is a playoff team right now. Yes, yeah, that, I guess they're right there with with, with Golden State, correct? At, at the, at yeah, they're, the, uh, they're, the they're in the ten spot, which is. Surprisingly, a playoff spot now. Yeah, they're a game or two under five hundred, I think. Yeah. So I was uh, reading up on this this play-in tournament and how they're going to do it. It's going to let me see if I got it right. The seven and eight are going to play each other. The winner of that game is in. Okay. So right now, okay. it's, right now it's Boston and Charlotte. So Boston and Charlotte will play. The winner of that game is in the playoffs. They get the seven seed. So then. The loser of that game will play the winner of the 9-10 game, which is Indiana and Washington. And then they'll play each other. There's no, from what I'm reading, there's no two out of three this year. Okay, so that was my understanding that that if uh, if one of the... I I guess my understanding was if the game between the 9 and the 10, if the 10 won, they'd have to win two games out of three. It doesn't, it's say, one, it doesn't say that. I'm on NBA.com. I mean, it, it doesn't say two out of three. Okay. I mean, I, I thought it was two, but because last year all they did was 9-10. The, 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 the 7 didn't have to play, if I remember. No, it was 8-9. I'm sorry. There was no 10. The set, top 7 were in. It was only that one game, I think, between like Portland and uh, Houston. It was out west. It was in the west. That's right, because of the COVID. The, the east was set. Remember all the teams that were within a certain amount, and there was there was no team within five games. I think. Yeah, and that's why they were going to the bubble situation. Mm-hmm. Right. Yeah. So this year is going to be different. So yeah, it sounds good. I mean, you know, the, yeah, one, uh, if you're the nine seed or the ten seed, you know you, you get a chance to make the playoffs. Go out there and win that game. Don't worry about you need to win two out of three or something like that. Right. And they know who's playing out of his mind right now is Russell Westbrook. Last night he had 14 points, 24 assists, and 21 rebounds. 21 rebounds for a, a point guard. Well, nobody played defense in that game last, no. last night from the, from the way the score looked. I guess 154 points for the winner, <laughs> but you're right. He, you're, you're right. He has been 
been playing extremely well. He has set the NBA record for assists in a game. You know who has it? Yeah. Most assists in a game? Mm-hmm. I do not. Uh, Steve Nash? I, I'm 99% sure it's Scott Skiles. Okay. With 27. <laughs> I took a guess. <laughs> Hey, hey, I guess the Hall of Famer, so. <laughs> yeah. I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to have the staff in the back look it up, but I'm pretty sure I'm right. Unless it's been broken and I was sleeping. Let's see. I think I would have heard it. That, that, that was a record from a long time ago. It wasn't 20. I have the player right, but it wasn't 27. It was 30. 30 assists for Scott Skiles. Now he's a man. Uh, now he's a uh, his head coach. That was yeah, a lot of point guards, a lot of point guards seem to become head coaches. Yeah. That was 1990 that happened, 31 years ago. Wow. Wow. <laughs> How about that? Things things you learn here on Philly Sports Talk. <laughs> yeah, well, when you mentioned that about, um, when I said about a Hall of Famer there, I, I did want to uh, backtrack a second here to the Phillies because mm-hmm. this was on, on some of the Twitter last night. Just let me ask you this real quick. Do you think Scott Rowland is a Hall of Famer? My first instinct is to say yes. Yeah, me too. Okay, good. Me too. That's yeah, good. A lot of, uh, and, and they were showing some, uh, I, I guess it was Leslie Goodell on one of her tweets last night. I put um, a link to a YouTube with some highlights of him at third base. And I remember him being good, but I didn't remember him making those plays. But, uh, yeah, Scott Rowland was, was, was a guy who came through Philadelphia, wasn't much liked by the fans, but was an outstanding yeah. Player who just who I guess yeah I think he should be a Hall of Fame. He's definitely borderline. I'm gonna have his stats up. He, he, he's probably about 200 hits short. I mean he, he's he has 2,077 hits. Wow. Yeah, 517 doubles, 316 home runs. See, it's it's his last one, two, three, four years that hurt him. He only had he played for Cincinnati those years. He only played 40 games. 133, 65, and 92. Okay. And he only hit 323, 36 home runs in the four years combined. Uh, he was actually an all-star two of those seasons. I guess that's just the, the fans voting him in. Yeah, that, that based on that name recognition. Yeah. Career, career average, 281. On-base percentage, 364. He had 118 stolen bases. He was an all-star one seven times. He's, he's about as borderline as they come. Yeah, I agree with that. Never won a world. Never won a world. Did he win a World Series with St. Louis? I. Let me say. I do not think he did. Because that that would definitely. There we go. Yes, he did. Two thousand six. St. Louis okay. beat, beat St. Louis beat Detroit. Result win. He played in the World Series twice. Lost to Boston in 2004 and won it in 2006. Oh. Oh. So he's a World Series champion. 20, 2100. You know what, though? Every time I come out with a player like this, I, yeah, now I can um, compare him to Harold Bain, too, then. And he has better numbers than Harold Bain, so. Maybe one year. I mean, he's been retired since 2012. Yeah, he's got it. Yeah, I, I, I think it's. it's so we're doing. I, I think he'll get in. I don't know um, if it's going to be next year or two, but yeah, I think he'll get in now. What what team hat does he wear? <laughs> Probably St. Louis because he didn't like being in Philadelphia. No, no, he didn't. Actually, he played, he, he played for he played for four teams. You know the other two? Yeah, he played for the Cardinals, the Phillies, the uh, Blue Jays, and the Reds. Bingo. Yep. Yeah, he was he was very good for the Blue Jays. Blue Jays. He played in Toronto how many years? Two? One? It wasn't many. Two. It wasn't many. Yeah, so. yeah the one thing I wanted the one thing I wanted to ask you about the Sixers is when um when you were watching the game, especially the game against San Antonio, when you looked up and you you would see that Ben Simmons had played thirty minutes in the game and had like three points. Yep. 30, 32 minutes, three points is what I tweeted. Yeah, that can't happen in a playoff game. No. But, yeah. but it, it was thirty. It, it was a lazy thirty-two minute. He, he just would dribble up and, and hang the ball to Danny Green and run into the corners. Like he didn't want to play. Uh, 
it wasn't a certain himself at all. I mean, that, and that was a team he could have taken the ball in the basket against with ease. They weren't out there playing defense. They were, no. they were a bunch of undersized guys who just were, were shooting threes. But. Keldon Johnson. Mind, he, he did hit the game winning, uh, yeah, he took the ball. If he doesn't do that, it's the, it's the worst game he's ever played. Yeah, it is. <laughs> and, and I, was, well, I was looking at it. I am thinking about this today when, when you look at going to the playoffs. I mean, you would think on any given night, you're, you're going to get 30 to 35 from it. Right. Tobias will probably give you 15 to 20. So there you can, there you have 50, 55 points. Right. When you look then at Curry, 10 to 12. Yep. So we're up to maybe 65, 67. Yep. Danny Green. Will give you another ten, 10 to twelve, right. so that can get you to eighty points. Mm-hmm. Then you have the toss up of what you can get off the bench. If Ben's only going to give you ten, that gets you to ninety. You're going to need another twenty off the bench, right? Uh, unless, unless you're really locking down the team defensively. Well, I know where eight and eight to ten of those points are going to come from, but from a guy who's played outstanding this year, and I'm surprised, and he looks like he's playing like he's twenty five. It's Dwight Howard. Boy, Howard, he's played great for the Sixers this year. He has, and the thing is, um, my he will get his rebounds, and you're right, he will get some points here and there. Um, the only concern I have um, with him is, is at the foul line, but if he's getting to the foul line, that should be a net positive for the Sixers. Sure. And then you're gonna have then you're gonna have Shake Milton. If he can get you eight to ten, you're you're at a hundred. Because I know what you're doing. We're trying to outscore Brooklyn here, right? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so, <laughs> right. So, so there's 108. Then you need Furkan Korkmaz to hit two threes in his 10 minutes of play. And Matisse, well, Matisse will, will have to be a net positive. I, I don't know if you can go about a lot of scoring with him, well, but him on the floor, he's got to be a positive, not a negative while he's out there. If you can hold the other teams, you know, superstar down a little bit, and that's going to definitely be an advantage. And right. Andrew McCutcheon back here for the third time in the fourth inning. Going for his third home run. He had a chance. Well, at least a chance for an RBI. I don't think I've seen a fellow hit three or three home runs in a game since probably, probably Mark Witten. <laughs> <laughs> that was back in vet- <laughs> Veteran Stadium. I'm trying to. I'm, I'm, I'm trying to think. Of, I'm just laughing, but come on, Brian Howard did it. Hey, he did <laughs> against the Yankees, right? That could be. I think I was at the game. He <laughs> probably did it against the Gold teams, but but did Mark with Hart? What was it? Hart and Mark with? Yeah. <laughs> Play for the Cardinals, <laughs> the Reds. Who was the Who was the pitcher for the Phillies that had like ten RBIs the one game? Robert Person. <laughs> Robert yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I struck out. Yeah. I was saying uh, when I was at the game uh, a couple weeks ago, I haven't seen I haven't seen a cycle for the Phillies in a long, long time. I, mean, can't freeze the last I, I was there. I was at that game also. That that was a, a Saturday night game against the Dodgers, and exactly. And no, no, what else? Did, what else happened that game? Yeah, the, if you remember something, something happened with the stadium that game. The, the power went out. I don't we, we, we were sitting in the dark. <laughs> we were probably, I think, we were the six or seven hundred level on the third base side. The power went. It was completely dark. All that was on was like the auxiliary lights, and um, you had to wait for the lights to come back on. Yeah. Yeah, probably. <laughs> I know. That, that's that's a, that's a story for another day too. I like to read that book. I heard a guy either is writing or wrote a book about living in the vet. I might have to, I might have to buy that. Yeah, just moved in. where was he saying? In the bathroom? What? No, nobody did. Nobody did a check in the stadium before they left. Yeah, I, I, I gotta read the story. 
<laughs> so, um, let's go back to the Sixers. Well, we have seven games left, so this time next week, we should really have an idea whether or not we'll be the number one seed. Because they have like five games in seven days. Yeah, definitely. They have five games in seven days, the Sixers. There are seven games remaining. I guess I'll pull up the schedule. Yeah, I guess a couple of those, they're going to end against um, the Magic, so hopefully they don't drop one of those games. Right. Hopefully they don't even need to, need to win that game. Uh, we, missed, exactly. we missed George Hill. George Hill is going to score you a few points in the playoffs. Yeah, yeah George, George Hill seems like he's a guy who can take somebody off the dribble and can occasionally create his own shot, which is something the Sixers have, have been missing from, from, from a guy coming off the bench. And it's something, something, frankly, I didn't know he could do. I thought he was just a standstill three-point shooter. I thought he was your typical 3 and D guy. But it looks like he, he can take a guy off the dribble, which I was pleasantly surprised with. Wouldn't that, wouldn't that be an amazing thing if, if he's a major contributor? Yeah. I mean, not, not, not like he's going to score 30, 40 points in the game right. or anything like that, but, but, but just the addition of him adds to the Sixers. That, that would just be amazing because when it came time to make trades, it was like, George Hill... I it was like, well, really? But if that would just work out perfectly if he was someone who came in and then that was a piece that was missing. Right. So, real quick, I'll throw down the last seven games. We're in Houston tomorrow night. That's gotta be a win. We're home for the New Orleans Pelicans on Friday night. Should be a win. Home for Detroit Saturday night. Win. And they go to Indiana next Tuesday. Who knows? I mean, they have a lot of two days rest, so they should have the full full complement of players. So right. they should be four. And they go down to Miami. That's a tough one. So maybe four and one. Then you got two home games from with Orlando, like you said. So we win one this season. Yeah. Right. So if they if they need those games, they, they should be able to crank it up and win them. So then where are they? Well, there, yeah, there'd be no excuse for Orlando winning those games and this is out on a better draft day. Right. <laughs> Even they did win last night, I think they beat Detroit. They've played decent since the trade, actually. They had a couple young guys step up. Um, then, you, then you go to uh, Brooklyn. Let's look at their, their uh, schedule for the rest of the way. What do we have? They're playing right now in Milwaukee. They're losing by five at halftime. They haven't gotten James Harden back. I'm surprised. It says, no, they haven't. And um, I guess... Uh, the only thing that I've seen about that about that is everything comes up to well, it's kind of that baseball is kind of day to day. So right. it's, it's 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 not like well he's going to miss another uh, two games because he has a straight knee or something. It's just there's not really much that they're saying. But you're right, he hasn't been playing. So here's their schedule. Not not easy. They're in Milwaukee tonight, and they're in Dallas Thursday night. In Denver, who's playing great Saturday night. Then in Chicago, there are a lot of away games. That's, that's Tuesday, and then next Wednesday they're home for San Antonio, home for the Bulls, home for the Cleveland Cavaliers. So they should win their last three games as well. But hopefully the Sixers have it in hand by then, which they easily could because these next three games, I could see Brooklyn dropping too easily. Yeah, I could too, and that that would be it. Would be nice if, if that could happen. The Sixers, and yeah, we. Since we started this show, that's one thing we've been trying to point out. They need to have a home court. And <laughs> just throw out like they have home court and it won't work out. <laughs> yeah, it only takes one loss to shift the series back to the other team. Uh, the Sixers haven't been lights out at home this year. They, they've dropped a few here and there. They haven't been completely dominant. But what are they, 28-4 and four with their, their starting starting five? So it is twenty eight and four, twenty two and four. Yeah, I think I think you're right. I think there is only four losses in that. Yeah. Yeah, and with with, with their starting five, so hopefully that's something that, that's positive and can carry over. Yeah, definitely, it's gonna be exciting. It's gonna be very, very exciting. Yeah, it is. It is, and it's one of those things to where, as Philadelphia fans, um, any game they lose, we're gonna say, okay, well. They're, they're done, they're out of the playoffs, um, they're going to get uh, swept the next uh, few games in the series that's over, and, 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 and any game they win, it's like, oh, well, this is the best team in the East. <laughs> I thought you were going to say the same thing I was thinking, any game they lose is going to be Ben Simmons' fault. 
<laughs> it's always going to be Ben Simmons. Yep. <laughs> I, uh, I, 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 Ben Simmons puts in, puts in 20. Well, if they, if they don't, if they do anything short of making the finals, it's going to be trade Ben Simmons. That's going to be the big talk over the winter. I mean, there was, over the summer, I'm sorry. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I, I, yeah, because you, you wouldn't think if Ben Simmons is uh, scoring 20 points and uh, playing some uh, good lockdown defense and averaging almost uh, double digits in, in assists per game, oh, you would definitely think the Sixers are, are absolutely going to win the East. Um, if, if, if he's doing that, the team falls short. Wow. Yep. Well, that's what time it is. It's 8.42, it's 8.42, and we haven't taken a break yet, so let's take a break. We'll do a couple of commercials here, and we'll be back with Philly Sports Talk with Cassie Chris here on IE Sports Radio, your direct feed for all its sports. What's good, fight fans? It's your boy, Marcus Los Great. Here to give you what you want. Here to give you what you need. Yeah, man. Yeah. <laughs> I'm coming to you live. Straight from your mama's basement with a crispy awesome. White tea. <laughs> we are coming to you live every Tuesday at 10 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Powered by IE Sports Radio, your direct feed for all that is sports. Are you a fan of volleyball? Are you a fan of Thunder Spikes? Then I have the show for you. Set Point, where I cover NCAA men's and women's volleyball, high school boys and girls volleyball, beach volleyball, and even professional volleyball. Catch the action every week here on IE Sports Radio, your direct feed for all that is sports.
and welcome back everyone to Philly Sports Talk with Cash and Chris. We covered the Phillies, we covered the Sixers, now we're going to cover the Eagles draft. What do you think of the Eagles draft, Chris? Yes, very interesting. Um, yeah, and 847, buddy, you're on IB Sports Radio, your direct feed for all the sports, and it's time to get into probably what was the biggest news in Philadelphia sports was the draft pick made in the first round by the Philadelphia Eagles last week. Yeah, Devontae Smith, I mean, I'm happy. I'm happy. He's a guy I wanted. He's a guy that we mentioned last week that the Giants could take away from us, and they would have because they drafted a wide receiver in the first round. So they definitely would have had their eyes on Devontae Smith and probably taken him with the 11th pick. So it was a good move moving up by Howie to um, steal him from the Giants and make the deal with Dallas. After that, yeah. I don't see many other great moves in the draft. <laughs> Once you get to those picks, especially after the second round, I, I don't know. Can, can these guys turn, turn into NFL players? Uh, possibly, but more than likely, they don't. Not but they once again did the same old story with the second round. They picked a hurt player. They picked a player who we don't know if he's going to be around and ready to go. When, when healthy, he's a great lineman, great center, dominant. 344 pounds. He's your center of the future, but will he be able to play? Yeah, that's the question. And how did that work when they drafted City Jones, who had a few injuries coming out of college? Exactly. I mean, I, I think even it, Dickerson probably has more of a uh, pedigree than Jones. More of a more of a you know, future than Jones. But. Well, and the, the concerning thing is, okay, yes, he is a very big lineman with injuries to his knees right. and here, here, here's the thing that's something you need to, uh, to be strong so you can push back against other guys your size exactly. who are trying to get to your quarterback and hey hey maybe the Eagles know something that uh, we're just uh, that we don't know where the guy has had these surgeries or is back to being healthy and they think that he will be fine and hopefully that's the case I don't know. They, they weren't able to meet with the players, so they're, I think they're, they're guessing as well. They passed on, on, on starters. They passed on guys that could step in and start. I mean, granted, they're not going to be a 10 win team. They're not going to not gonna make the playoffs next year. So they can they sit around and wait? Yes, they have Jason Kelsey. So I guess it's a yet to be determined move right there. But once again, like you said, in the second round of each. I don't know. I know. Would he have been there? Would he, would he have been there later? You don't know. But if, but if someone else took the gamble, that can't take the gamble. Something that takes something different. Right. They could have taken a cornerback, which is a very important position. They, they could have had um, Sante Samuel Jr. and said they waited until the fourth round, and they picked the cornerback from Texas Tech, McPherson, who might not be a starter. Yeah. In the fourth round, he's okay. The word is potential. Right. Then again, a lot of times potential doesn't turn into anything. Right. In the third round, they took it. Yeah. The, the, the running back they took, once again, it's, it's, it's one of those things, well, we'll wait and see. Yeah, I mean, he's a good player. I mean, I saw him play at Memphis. He, he played at Temple a couple times. He was a high yard per carry guy. He could catch the ball. He, you know, he's like a Boston Scott. Uh, probably an uh, upgrade from a Boston Scott. Decent player. Um... What, what I was thinking today is, though, you're going to have you know, your wide receiver position. You're going to have some decisions to make. You're going to have uh, Devontae Smith, uh, Jalen Rager. And you're gonna, are you going to bring back Fulgham? I, I think so, right? You're going to have to give him a shot. You still have Arcega Whiteside, and you still have a Greg Ward. I think somebody gets cut. Well, it's got to be Whiteside, I would think. Yeah, that's, that's, a, that's admitting they were wrong. Okay, so it's not going to be him then. <laughs> <laughs> you, just, you, you, just, you just made the strongest argument for him being on the team. Right. <laughs> yeah, so then it will be Travis Fulton, who will probably have to go, um, who's probably a guy, at least, at least in reports that had come out, he was a guy who Howie Roseman was not a big fan of, but Doug Peterson was. I, I think it's Greg Ward that would go. Shh. I'm not 
Yeah, you, you could be right. I think he's, he's pretty much shown you his potential, he, the, the, the fullness of what he could do. Well, he did catch that touchdown in Green Bay. Yeah. <laughs> First career. No, you know, you're, yeah, you're right. It, it could be. But it, doesn't it always seem like the Eagles have a great ward on their team? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's like you know, he just just moved. The names change, but the players the same. Yeah, yeah. The Eagles could use a big wide receiver. I think that would make a hell of a difference. They could get a big, uh, a um, like, a, like an Alshon Jeffrey in his prime type of guy. Well, and when you look at when you look at with uh, Devontae Smith now coming to the team and the thinking behind it is with his speed and the idea of him being able to get some separation and hopefully the line is going to be able to protect Jalen Hurts and Hurts is going to turn into a quarterback who can throw the ball downfield some the defense is going to have to try and cover Devontae Smith and that may allow some of these other guys to um, be open more than they uh, have been recently hopefully that turns into either Travis Holcomb uh, being open more, and especially at Jalen Rager. Here's what I like about Smith. Smith is, I wa- like I said before the show, we watched. I watched a lot of him at Alabama. He's not a deep threat receiver. He's a over the middle, ten to fifteen yard, and, and run after the catch receiver, which is good. Which is good because they're not going to have the time for him to get deep. So it's going to really help Jalen Hurts that he's going to have a, a, a player like that that can run short patterns and get open and call a separation so, you know, so quickly. But, well, if you, yeah, go ahead. but, yeah, if, you had, if you had Jalen Rager being the, the, the speed demon that they uh, said that he was, mm-hmm. he, could be the, he could be the deep threat. Right. But I don't think that's... No, no, actually, actually you're right. They're, they're, say that. They, they can line up on the same side of the field and Smith could get draw a tender from two and you may have single coverage on Rager deep. So they might, they might have found something here. Uh, open as well. Yeah, yeah. So that, that, that's great, great draft pick. But the, the, so, the, so the, we're, looking the, the, we're looking at the Eagles win five games next year. Maybe the, the only the, the only but is a lot of times he came limping off the field in, in Alabama. Yes, he's young. He can he can shake those injuries. But hopefully the NFL is a, it's a different beast. You know, at one hundred and sixty six pounds. He's going to have to put 10 pounds on, I think. Well, and, here, and here's the other issue, too, that, that, that I was thinking about. And I, know, I know this is right across your mind, too. Mm-hmm. The coaching staff for the Eagles is not like a Bill Belichick receiver or something. <laughs> no, there's, there's, there's no idea who, who these people are. And if they can speak to maybe people who could, who could coach, make someone, and boom. I think if they're listening to the show, they, they were just like, wow, good idea. <laughs> Like the Chiefs do with um, Tyreek Hill and their other and Robinson and uh, Sammy Watkins. Was it was it me or did he not look overly excited when he was picked? He didn't. He didn't. He didn't look that happy walking towards the. Towards the stage. No, I don't. I don't know if it was the fact that uh, that was his plan all along, or if it was the fact that I don't know. He said he said all the right things afterwards, but everybody does. Mm-hmm. He's, he does have a. He is a little bit familiar with Jalen Hurts. Yeah, right? yeah. One point two. He threw a lot of. Tw- I think like twenty four passes, and he was like twelve for twenty four on those twelve. Those twenty four passes. So. Well, it could just be one of those things too with. Um, being drafted in Philadelphia, the way the fan base is, he's like, oh, I'm, 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 I'm going to get, uh, I'm going to have a fire put under me. I'm going to get criticized no matter what I do. Mm-hmm. Either that, that, or he might have been uh, unhappy that he dropped so far. Possibly. And, and his, his teammate got drafted ahead of him. Waddle. There's, there's, there's one way to correct that. If I'm wrong. Yeah, exactly. Mm-hmm. I think the last person I remember in Philadelphia who said something like that was Nerlens Noel. How did that work out for him? <laughs> Still in the league. 
With with uh, Timber though, I, he's done. Oh, without, oh, without a doubt, right? That's, that's a lock. It's not a PM. Yeah, it has to be. <laughs> uh, yeah, what was their big acquisition in the off season? Julius Randle. Yeah, everybody was like, "What?" I've been, well, I've been saying the Sixers should sign Julius Randle since he's, since he's been in the league. I wanted him. I said he'd be the perfect player for this team. There was no reason they could have got him. They, they could have not signed Tobias Harris and gotten him. They could have, you're right. They'd be tough. Uh, They'd be yeah. tough to beat if they had Julius Randle. Yeah, and it's one of those things that, that, that's worked out for the Knicks. Of course, being a Sixers fan, mm-hmm. uh, you know, it's one of those things where we never want to see the Knicks do well. But you do have to say it's better for the NBA when the Knicks are doing well. Yeah. I mean, not that I think that the Sixers would lose it. I'll just say they would no. They'll probably They might win a first round series. Yeah. Probably the four seed, probably. Which is a, which is a feat in itself. Yeah. yeah, I agree. Well, well, the Milwaukee, 66 points in the first half tonight. Brooklyn Gill, 66 points. They just play no defense. Yeah, they, um, their, their philosophy is try to outscore you. And usually games where, where the Sixers are trying to outscore people, they, they, uh, Usually don't end too well in the Sixers' favor, but hopefully that's that, that's something where if they get into that series against Brooklyn, um, and if Brooklyn wants to play that game, the Sixers can do it. I kind of like the Sixers in the series as a defense. I think we'll we'll be we'll be able to make enough stops on defense that our 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 will score enough points. That Durant guy uh, just gives me a little bit of a worry. Yeah, <laughs> I, I, it's just. Not Harden, uh, b- believe it or not. And I guess it's one of those things, too, because we have C. Hard playing in the finals. And obviously, he, he can put up numbers, but it, it's just Durant that um, yeah. is, is the guy who I think could could, could be a problem. And Har- Harden's going to take the touches away from Durant, which will probably work in our favor. Think about it. There'll be less shots for him. Yeah, and then Kyrie Irving's there. Yeah, why not? <laughs> so, uh, yeah, you're right. It's, it's, one, it's one of those things, too, where... Um, if Brooklyn's coming out trying to outscore somebody and, and the Sixers can find something on defense, I mean, I know, I know before we, we, we saw Doc Rivers throw his own at some people, and you know, hey, if, it, if it's something that, that, that can shut them down for even um, a part of a quarter, exactly. that, that could, it, yeah, could, could be all the case, correct? Yeah. Nine o'clock on the East Coast. Um, Good question. Now, and, uh, and our Phillies are winning six to one in yeah. the top of the six. Nobody out in the man on first base. And um, to those out there who uh, follow me on Twitter, I have had uh, a couple things to say about Aaron Nola, and I don't think I've made it any secret that I'm not a huge fan of Aaron Nola. Um, only from the standpoint that in big games he seemed to shy away throughout his career, and he's been labeled an ace, and it just seems like um, he struggles too much. Um, to be considered an ace. And hey, after he came out tonight, bases loaded, uh, 29 pitches in the first inning, gave up a run, and that's all he's given up. I just gotta say, look, that's what an ace needs to do. 90, 90 pitches? Yeah, 90 pitches in the top of the six with nobody out. Um, that's, that's looking like they're gonna get into the bullpen. Yeah. And no, nobody is safe to fill this bullpen. Not at all. Well, we have, we have a dare here. Shane on the chat board says, if the Eagles go 12-5 and five next year, he'll carry his dog 50 miles to Wildwood. Well, uh, yeah. If it happens, I'll bring a TV crew in. Yeah. 12-5, <laughs> well, there's going to have to be a lot of teams with a lot of injuries. No injuries to the Eagles. A lot of things are going to have to be. <laughs> wow. Yeah, they're not going 12-5. and five. No. Would I like to see them go 12-5? Absolutely. Sure. 
Probably be a first round exit anyway. Now the team that probably will go twelve and five next year is Indianapolis Colts. Yeah. Yeah, I guess. Uh, Carson Wentz isn't going to have to carry the team. He's just going to have to carry hand the ball to Jonathan Taylor and the other two running backs, and <laughs> he probably throw the ball twenty times a game and win. spot in Indianapolis where we don't really hate them and they're in the other conference and it's not really going to hurt us for them to win so we can root for him and I don't mind seeing him win either because I don't think he was given the like you said the weapons here he wasn't given the team he wasn't given the coaching either Doug Peterson wasn't a great coach I know we won the Super Bowl but that was more I would think that was more of the players and the, the, the defense and the uh, coaching staff around him the Frank Reich and the uh, Jim Johnson, they they ran the team, and uh, Nick and Nick Foles. <laughs> yeah. No. When they were driving in New Orleans, I thought they were going back to the Super Bowl. So did I. <laughs> and, 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 and was it was it Alshon Jeffrey who missed the ball? Yeah, he dropped the ball. Yeah, yeah well, right those hands. Yeah, because yeah, I remember the cover of Sports Illustrated that came out. It had Nick Foles on the cover, and it said again. <laughs> yeah. and, then, and then what happened in New Orleans was this, this um, that's you know, in that season. That's what Sports Illustrated does to people. When I saw when I saw Gonzaga on the cover of Sports Illustrated, I said they're not winning the championship. And we we, we said Baylor all along. We were right. They dominated them. No, no, we're still waiting. We're still waiting for our prizes here on the on the station. They're on their way. Larry's knitting them out in California. That's <laughs> <laughs> kidding, Larry. And one other bracket had had um, Baylor. I think one had Illinois, one had Illinois, and the rest I think had Gonzaga. Is it, is it Gonzaga or Gonzaga? Gonzaga. But they but don't they but they call them the Zags. They don't call them the Zogs. <laughs> Sean Bradley, they can dribble. I'm trying, 
Ch his name his name is uh, Chet Chet Holmgren. Uh, where's he from? Yeah, yeah. Now, this this kid's from Minnesota. Okay. I, I actually actually saw like a couple highlights of him on the Sports Center, like dribbling coast to coast, and he, he had a couple big dunks that you know he made like top plays. He's he's, he's he's not seven foot seven. He's seven. He's seven foot one hundred and ninety pounds. Seven foot one ninety. That might be the skinniest player you'll ever see. Yeah. I think well, Jackie Bradley's really uh, gotten bad quick. Oof, he's struggling. Yeah. Yes. Doesn't look good at all. And that's the thing, too, is, like, like you said earlier, the Brewers are in first place. Yeah, first place, 17 as well. Yeah. That's why they play 162 games in baseball, because any anybody can get hot for 30 games. Right, and, and, but then with 162 games, usually usually does is it, it, it does um, weed out the teams that, that aren't very good. Exactly. And, and I guess the thing, too, is that we've talked about, because we've, well, we've had a couple seasons here where the Phillies seem to, which the way the wild card is, they've been in it uh, coming into September. We just don't want to go back to the seasons uh, that we remember here over these last nine to where you look up, it's July 1st, and it's like, oh, they're 14 games out, and it's like, uh. Yeah, I think just the, the division is going to keep them in it until July, I think. At least. And the other thing too is when you when when, when you look at that, what's frustrating is it's like that that you know go on a nice winning streak and and, and um, if the division's going to be uh, this bad, uh, go out there and win it. Or go out there and make a move. True. I mean, center field. Yeah, not just center field. Make a make acquire a pitcher from a, from a losing team. They haven't done that these last five years. They have they haven't made the the wave, waiver wire move or the the trade deadline move. They just they shy away from it. I don't know if it's other teams beating them to the punch, and the bases are loaded here on the, on the sixth inning. Yeah, um, Noah's uh, struggling here just a, a little bit here in, in the sixth inning. Yeah, um, he, he struggled the whole game. It's, it's, it's been he's labored. He doesn't look comfortable tonight. To have one run is a, a miracle at this point. It is. <laughs> yeah, and you're right too. It's been it's been one of those situations to win. The team has gotten down to that trade deadline. They some pieces that they tried to add, especially if it's been an arm or something like that. And it really, really hasn't worked out. But there hasn't been that that huge flash that they, that, that they tried to make to put them over the top. Nope, not at all. Not even close. It's, it's always it's always been that. Well, from 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 the ownership, we don't really think we're contenders. So why go out and try to spend or go to the luxury tax or try to? And, it's, and then it just gets to be, it just gets to be frustrating. Yeah. It makes the fans feel really good. Yeah, I really want to go see a team that doesn't care if they win or not. That doesn't want to compete. Well, yeah, because at times when you look at this, and, and, and I, I, made, I made this comment on Twitter the other night, it, it seems like the Phillies' priority is not winning. Right. The only reason I said that was, what was you brought David Hale in and one pitch, and, and, and he came out the bases loaded, and one pitch the bases were cleared. Got to say low. Why? Uh, no, it's against the Mets, actually. No, he, he, didn't say, he, he did the same thing as St. Louis. I know. <laughs> he did the same thing. <laughs> and it's like, okay, well, he's still out there. <laughs> All right. NASCAR, right? Yeah, let's go to Darlington for NASCAR. Well, the first we could talk about last week in Kansas. A yeah, very, very interesting race. Kyle Larson. Dominated almost the entire race and finished 19th. <laughs> well, and Danny Hamlin was running pretty well too. And he well. crashed into the wall. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, but uh, Kyle Busch was uh, undefeated on his birthday. So I heard that. I said, uh, I guess Kyle Busch is going to win. And he found the way to win. Yeah, he ran the truck race on Saturday night and dominated that race as well. That that's been an advantage. That's something that, to look for when you're filling out your fantasy um, lineups um, out there. If a guy runs the night before, that's basically his practice session. 
Like him and Ross Chastain both ran on Saturday night. I believe they both finished in the top 10 on Sunday, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, they did. Chastain did get up to the finish? Okay. I think, I think so, yes. Yeah. yeah, and like you said, that has to be with some of the records, the way that that, that, that race turned out. Uh, yeah, it was just surprising uh, because a lot of the guys who you thought were running well just ran into some trouble, which is what can happen in a race. And then Darlington this week, um, another track that should be uh, positive for Denny Hammond, but I'm not going to pick him. Oh. Oh, you're gonna pick, who are you going to pick? Let me hear. Joey Logano. Okay, yeah. That's, 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 that's definitely the line of thinking I'm at. It's, it's going to be a veteran. Darlington's a tough track. Exactly. It's, it's, it's going to be someone who's been around. I, I, I'm close to saying Kurt Busch, but I, I don't think at this. I'm clo- I don't think at this point in his career he's, he's, he's going to win anymore. Yeah, I'm thinking either Brad or um, Martin Truex. I have a feel. I have a, I have a Martin. I have a Martin Truex feeling. Okay. Yeah. So, but, Harvick's not. Uh, he did finish second this week, but that was late in the race. He's not running well. No. And pop up. It's gonna drop. Yeah, that's, what, that's what I thought this week too. I'm like, look, look at this. He he hasn't run well, and this race is gonna play into his hands, and he's gonna end up winning that. Man, race. Man, almost. Uh, almost. <laughs> yeah, I, you know, I, I, you know me. I, I follow the odds while I'm watching the race. Larson, when I first noticed that he was coming up through the field, was plus 300. By time there was, I th- before the last, next to the last caution, he was minus 1667. Wow. You had to lay like, $1,667 to win $100 on Larson. And he, wow. and he finished 19th. I, I, I asked our for you. I asked our Yeah. <laughs> yeah. My, my buddy actually put 200 on him when he was plus 300. He cashed out for five ninety five. That's a pretty good, a pretty good payday because the most he could win was seven hundred. Yeah, true. That, that, wow. was, that was a nice payday. I think MGM, Bet MGM, gives you nice cash outs on NASCAR, but Draft, DraftKings doesn't. They would only give you like two hundred and thirty dollars. They don't, they don't really up the the pay the cash outs because there's forty cars. Yeah, uh, Cassie, you've never been to a NASCAR race. I have, I have. Oh, okay. I've been to two. I've been to two actually. Okay. Yeah, I've been to Dover twice. Oh, cool. Yeah, I went, to, I went to the um the, the, the June race. It was way, way too hot, and September race was way too cold. <laughs> yeah, the June race, it was scorching sitting on those bleachers. Yeah, that's one thing that I need to do at some point, whether it is Dover or whether it's Pocono. But you've never been to a race? I'm not. Oh, I would have I thought the other way around. Yeah, I know, I know. And, um, <laughs> I, and, and the major reason why I have not is because it's one of those things where it's like, uh, I have been a NASCAR fan, but I've been a huge Denny Hamlin fan. It's never no secret about that. Yeah. Like, you can go and find that senior guys out. <laughs> yeah, well, not, I like watching them all, really. I, I, I don't really dislike anybody. But, um... But that, 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 yeah, I could do a Phillies game, and I could be down 10 in the second inning, too. <laughs> Well, well, my experience with the two races I went to, I'd rather watch it on TV. Oh, okay. It's it's loud. If you picture a thousand bees buzzing at the same time, but as loud at a concert level noise. That's that's what it's like. It, it's it's monotonous, especially at Dover on the mile track. Once the cars, like once they space out, and there's cars at every every uh, inch of the track almost. It, it doesn't, it's just, we were waiting for a caution, so we stopped the, the noise. Yeah, it was, it was rough. I mean, it was cool. I mean, it, we got there early, we watched the cars tune up in the garage, and, you know, all the, all the festivities. It's a, it's a long day, though. I, mean, I think we got there, we got there really early in the morning, because I didn't want to hit the traffic, because there's like 150,000 people there back in the day. This, this is when, this is when, like, this is when, like, um... This is probably like 2003. I went. I think Ryan Newman won the one race, and Jimmy Johnson won the other. Oh, okay. it, it was really cool. Like being in there, you can see the difference in the good cars. Like I, I, like I, I saw Kyle Larson Sunday. He was good because he was 
and I can see his times, but being there, you could tell Jimmy Johnson was the best car. It was just. Oh my God! Yeah, but but the difference. I was like, look at the difference in his in his speed. He was he was picking off the lap cars like they were going thirty miles an hour slower. It was it was cool. Over the last 10 years in NASCAR, I mean, that still goes on, but, but not to the level right. where it was. It's not that the drivers aren't there. It's, it's, it's that the bottom drivers aren't, aren't as bad as, as it was back then. Or is it the equipment? The equipment's really close. I mean, well, that's, that's true. And, and that, could be, that could be a good, a good, good point as well. I mean, I've said for years, just give them all the same car. Give everybody yeah. the same car and let them race. Why, why should a guy like uh, uh, Timmy Hill have a car that's five miles per hour slower than uh, Kyle Busch? <laughs> you know? <laughs> he can't compete. No, no, no. You're, you're, you're exactly right. It was like the other night. We got there to car ourselves. It's a um, and, uh, I was sitting here. We were watching a baseball game. It was, it was my wife and I. And... I'm trying to think exactly what, what the situation. Oh, oh, okay. It was it was a, it was a game Hector Neris ended up saving, and it was a long fly out at the end of the game. Mm-hmm. I think we talked about this last week that uh, that would have been a home run in Philadelphia. Yeah. And and not being a consummate baseball fan, she said, "Well, what do you mean? Oh, well, every park's different. It's yeah. not fair." Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> she said, "How long has that been going on since they've been playing?" It's like, oh. Okay. So. Yeah. The only thing they require is the bases are ninety feet apart. That's it. That's it. And the sixty and the sixty foot mound. Like, like Colorado has a huge infield. Yeah. And then other other places have smaller infields. It's just stuff you don't really realize unless you like really watch. Uh, Milwaukee has three hours in the game. Yep. Total mode to pick off the first base. Yeah, and, and Harris had a big kickoff on first base last night. Yeah, he did. That, that, that probably was the difference. That and, and, and uh, the check swing to end the game. Yeah. <laughs> what you say is true about the ballparks, though. I mean, Citizens Bank Park, the, the, the Phillies ended up putting a team together that could win in that park. Right, and right. And they haven't done it since. <laughs> no, they haven't. Now, now, for a lot of people who I've invited to come to our show or the podcast, the different things, and follow us on on Twitter, especially follow me, Aaron Nola tonight. Yes, struggled. Oh, he's going to come out of the game after after six. But hey, I'll give him credit for only giving up that one run and getting out of two uh, bases loaded jams. Yeah, he definitely battled. I would have liked to see him back here instead of uh, the 087 hitter that they have at the bat. Double rare. <laughs> oh, his average is that high now? Yeah, he's probably going to try oh. down here against the lefty. <laughs> well, I'd rather see Vince Velasquez, man. Yeah, yeah, that'd be a probably get better I'd option. Vince play center field. Yeah. Well, we've done an hour and 20 minutes. It's about as far as I can go. And uh, I'd like to thank everyone on the, on the chat board, everyone that's listening this week. We appreciate you. Yes, we do. And the only thing that I wanted to say here at the end was. It doesn't hurt Cash as much as it hurts me that there's no Flyers talk and no playoffs. <laughs> Once again, they didn't make the playoffs. What a shame. Uh, yeah. Uh, but, hey. Go Tampa um, Bay. Well, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, hey, we can against Pittsburgh and Washington, but, yeah, it's been, it's been an eventful show, and um, we will be back on next week at 8 o'clock. Right here, Philly Sports Talk, i.e. Sports Radio, your direct feed for all that sports. See everybody next week. See you guys.